Wow. I kind of think the fun bits are all the mistakes you make, really. Otherwise, you don't learn anything. I'd probably tell myself to stop showing off. Stop showing off. What are you doing? I'd probably just be embarrassed by my younger self. What were you thinking? But it was good because it was sort of the boost was great because it was like having a big brother all the time, you know? And Julian, you know, although in the show he's a bit of a geek, he's always far cooler than me. He is naturally a pretty cool character, you know? But also his dad's a teacher and Julian's pretty wise. So he's pretty amazing if anything happens or if you're upset. He's great at sort of, you know, he's really brilliant in that way. What do I, you, sorry. I do miss, you know, hanging out in the way in the bush because Rich was older as well. And although Rich is insane a lot of the time, Rich is the, the nicest man you'll ever meet in your life. He's like a sort of a natural Buddhist. He's just, his vibes are incredible. He's just, you know, if you could take Rich everywhere with you, you'd never be sad. He's brilliant. We were really good friends and he got me through a lot of bad things. When I first left art college and I was a bit ill, I actually got hepatitis and I was ill for a year. I was on the sofa for a year. I got quite depressed and he was the one who really helped me through that. We lived together in Hackney, but with a lot of, lot of us, like Dave Brown and lots of people. But um, then I didn't see him. When the bush went crazy and it all went crazy, he didn't see me for ages and he was a bit annoyed. He said that he was annoyed and then, but then he said he came to like a signing at H&V or something and he was like, I'm really annoyed, why haven't I seen Noel? And then he sort of came to a signing and just saw all these people and was like, oh right, he's doing that. He hasn't got time. <laughs> Not that I didn't have time with my friends, but I was just on this weird sort of thing. And um, so I didn't see him for a while. But the thing about Nigel is he's always stuck by me, even if I've made some, done some stupid things, he's always been there. It was crazy, because we were just going, this is, just, this is a culty little show, really, you know, about a merman with a vagina or whatever, a fox, a crack fox. It was, it was never meant to be we were never meant to be playing the O2 in Wembley and being on the cover of Time Out. So it was, I don't, and being on John Frost, I don't think we ever thought that would happen, so... Why did it? I, don't, I still don't know. I think maybe because, ultimately, double acts are quite powerful. There was always a good, powerful double act, and I think we were friends, me and June, and that came across on screen. I think there's something quite beautiful about it, and it was all natural, it just happened over the years. So, a lot of work and a lot of factors, but it all came together at the... Right. It's like David Cronenberg said something about, he does films and they, they don't really, occasionally they coincide with the mainstream, you know, like The Fly or something. Would, he'd do all these films that he thinks are great, but occasionally one of them will just tap into the mainstream. And I think with The Bush, it was sort of after the second or third series, maybe after the second series and then that tour, something happened and there was like a snowball effect and it just became this, this thing. We started getting a backlash as soon as we got popular <laughs> that day. <laughs> <laughs> we were popular for 20 minutes. I remember the day that we were on, we were on the cover of like Time Out or something and we were playing the O2 and I remember thinking, wow, bloody hell, how did we do this? And then I remember sort of that same day reading a review going, yeah, the booth was sold out. This, is, this show's not as good as a lot. And you just go, we only think we've only just got it. Like, next. <laughs> yeah, we got to the top and someone straight away just pushed us off the edge. <laughs> Which is funny in a way, but I guess that's human nature, isn't it? I do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, I loved, I loved it. You know, I loved every minute of it. I wanted to just have fun and do it. I would have carried on probably. I guess it was just the wrong timing. I really wanted to do America, try and crack America or write a film, but I guess maybe at that point Julian needed to stop for a bit and have his kids and it all sort of, it had kind of got too big. It had become this weird machine where lots of people were going, do this, do this, and it was for the wrong reasons, you know? We'd never done anything for anyone else or for money or, you know, because we should. So we were sort of a bit, mm. we always just made it in our bedroom and then brought it out and stuff happened. You know, we were surprised as anyone when we won the Perry and we were surprised when it got put on telly. You know, we were like, wow, this is great. We weren't ever sort of planning it. Like, I think the problem is now, we didn't really know if we could even make a living from it. Now, unfortunately, everyone's got their eye on the prize. Yeah. With Twitter and Facebook and all these things, it's, they're great in one way because they communicate really fast, but in another way, everyone sort of expects to be, to get, rewards out of making art, which you don't, most people don't, you know. So a lot of my friends or my contemporaries, I see me and June feel very lucky because a lot of our friends who are, you know, really talented never got many rewards out of, you know, 
out of making their stuff, which and you know, not even enough to, to make a living, you know? We've been really lucky. Our fans are obsessed. So they've probably given our show quite a lot of longevity in a way. And they are, I, I watched some recently. I haven't watched them for about five years. I watched some and I just thought, it was the first time I'd ever watched them without remembering how we did them. I forgot all the jokes. I was sort of laughing, going, these are good. I sort of enjoyed it myself, the boot. I just was going, oh yeah, it's quite a nice little charming, funny little story. And, Julian was really funny and Fortune was really making me laugh. There's a bit that Naboo did that really made me laugh. And I just thought, oh yeah, I quite like it. It's the first time I actually could enjoy it without going, oh God, I remember filming that. And, oh, that wasn't quite how we wanted it. And oh, not that joke. And do you know what I mean? I sort of watched it almost as if it wasn't me because it felt like such a long time ago. And I sort of enjoyed it and I was surprised. That's what I love about the Bush, it's a group. So I could, you can watch it and still enjoy it. Whereas if it's just you, yeah, I want to see just yourself doing shit. Like stand up or on a panel show, you're like, oh God, shut up. I just think, shut up, stop talking. But whereas in the bush, it's kind of, even me and Julie and I can watch because it's a kind of, it's the way that we both do stuff together, you know, that, so you can tolerate yourself because there's someone else there doing something great. So you sort of feel like you can what, you know, still slightly enjoy it, which is nice because you spend so much time making it, it's nice that you can still watch it and go, oh, that was all right, that wasn't it? Well, this is the thing. I, it's, I listened to it the other day and I hadn't listened to it since we made it. And I was like, this is good, we should put this out, even if it's just for the fans, you know? <laughs> I think the problem is we did it at Jimi Hendrix's studio, mm. which was expensive. So, you know, some people paid for it. So in a way, I don't know how we put it out in a small way now because it cost quite a lot to make. So people that provided the money will expect will want to make it quite sell a lot so that they can recoup some of the money, which maybe it's too late for that now, I don't know. I'd love to do a Boosh film, I really would. I, I hope we do, because I feel like we were, that's what we started out wanting to do. We really wanted to do a film, really. We didn't want to do, we know, we didn't... We wanted to do a film and then we thought, all right, we'll do a live show. We didn't really know how to do a live show, we sort of just learned and then we sort of, oh we do a radio show, then we did a TV show. We never quite got around to doing the film. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have been a terrorist. <laughs> I would have been a... Um, what, would you, what, what would you have done differently? Or what I would have learned an instrument, probably. You play bass vaguely, don't you? Yeah, badly. Um, probably would have just been in a band. Maybe. I don't know. I love comedy. I'm obsessed with comedy, so maybe I wouldn't, but I kind of love the freedom of music. It can be quite more abstract and, you know, you write a song, it's like a three minute thing of expression. Comedy is quite sort of difficult. I'm sure writing music is as difficult or making anything is, but it feels like there's a sort of um, freedom to that, to me writing music that I just feel like it's quite hard. Oh, me and June used to say it's a lot, a lot of... It's weird comedy because it sort of doesn't exist for very long because you make a really brilliant joke and then people hear it and that's it, it's gone. Whereas if you make a brilliant song, a brilliant melody, that people want to hear it over and over and over and over again. I mean, that's why I think Vic and Bob are such geniuses because they often do things that you just want to hear over and over again. I don't understand how they do it, but they're like old-fashioned comedians like Les Dawson or someone, or you don't mind, you want them to do the thing they do. I don't mind how many times a bit Reeves does these pop singing. <laughs> I still laugh every time. And that's incredible, really, isn't it? So I don't think I would have done anything differently. I'm lucky because I get to do painting and I get to make music as well. Yeah. I mean, I've been lucky because I've got to work with Julian, so I wouldn't have, because I probably wouldn't be able to really, I can come up with melodies and lyrics, but I wouldn't have been able to make them without Julian or Serge.